Hello everyone, here it finally is. This is the Washberry Pi in action. A washing machine controlled by a Raspberry Pi. So all the manufacturer's OEM control electronics is gone. This machine is now under the full control of the Raspberry Pi. Well, I have to apologize that it took so long because it has been more than two years and a half since I uploaded my first video on this project on YouTube, which now, by the way, I can watch on my washing machine. But now, finally, it's up and running. So before we do a first test wash, let's have a closer look inside. Here we have the Washberry Pi interface board, which connects the Raspberry Pi to the washing machine. On this board here, we have an array of eight BT139 triacs, which are used to switch the actuators inside the machine, whose gate in turn is switched through these optocouplers here. As you can see, two of them are currently not in use. And this transformer is actually not used for power supply, but for line voltage zero crossing detection. That's a piece of information I need for proper phase cutting. The secondary coil of this transformer is connected to a voltage divider and goes into the input of a comparator IC, which generates a square wave signal out of it that is fed into a GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. On top of that, also the signal from the inductive motor speed sensor um, is fed into the comparator. Now here on this board, we have a potential barrier along this line through the optocouplers and the transformer. This is the hot side, line voltage, um, and this is the, the cold safe side, just zero volts, five volts. Okay, um, on top of that, we have a com uh, an ADC chip here on the board, um, which is used to read the temperature information from the NTC temperature sensor, which is also connected to the board. And now all the sensors and actuators in this machine, such as the water inlet solenoid, the water level sensor and all the other stuff, they are wired up um, to the sport. On top of that, here behind the front panel of the machine, I installed a relay card, which is hosting two relays. And the function of them can be explained via the pinout that I reverse engineered in the first episode of the Washberry Pi project. So one of the relays makes a selection between either both stator calls in series or just one of them, which is required for spinning. And the other relay flips the polarity of the rotor coils, which is required for motor direction control, so either clockwise or counterclockwise. All right, now let's close the lid and turn it on. All right, now the top lid is back in place and a 32 inch flat screen TV is installed, which by the way is the minimum screen size that you need to get a, a really great washing experience. And also the Raspberry Pi is here and is wired up. So it is connected to the interface electronics via this flat cable and the interface electronics itself is hidden below the safety cover here to make sure you can't touch it. And as I said, there is full galvanic isolation and here it's all properly grounded. It's safe. You can't kill yourself by touching any metal parts of the Raspberry Pi. As I said, the OEM control electronics is gone. So the knob and all the buttons here on the front panel, they have no function anymore. All the control of the washing machine is now done via keyboard and mouse. Well, actually mainly via keyboard because there is no graphical user interface yet. I have to do all the control on the command line as you're gonna see in a minute. And here in the background, a monitor thread is running, which gives a number of log data every second. So drum RPM and some other info. Just to test it, I'm quickly gonna push the drum by hand. And then we have a look at the log data. And here you see, yeah, 120, 84, 50 RPM, and then it came to rest. So, okay, RPM measurement is working. All right, so let's start washing. Um, first, we put a few clothes inside, so a shirt and a pair of pants that I flip inside out. And then um, we can turn on the drum motion. Um, it's not yet fully automated at the moment, um, as you will see in a second. I have to make a few settings by hand. So we say periodic clockwise counterclockwise drum motion option two. Then let's say we do it for 3600 seconds, so just one hour in total. We set a rotation interval of seven seconds and a break of five seconds in between. And as now as I press enter, you will see that the drum starts spinning. It will spin seven seconds counterclockwise, then make a five second break, 
then seven seconds clockwise and again five seconds break. That's the setting I just made. And at this point you see that it might be a good idea to finally close the door to prevent all the stuff here from falling out. And then we can wash. And no, wait, I think there is something still missing. Ah, yeah, I haven't filled in wash powder yet. That's a good point. Um, some step that still needs to be done. Okay, so let's get the wash powder in and... Oh, no, wait, something else is missing. Ah, yeah, we still need water. That's the point. Um, yeah, actually, um, the water inlet solenoid of this machine, it's in principle wired, but I'm not going to use it now. I come up with another solution. I will use warm tap water for this purpose. And actually, also, the electric heater in this machine, it's not yet wired up. I'm not going to use it because I can get warm water directly from my water tap because the, the solar collectors on the roof are providing me with free warm water, so no electricity needed. And okay, let's flush it in. And uh, this is pretty warm water, so now as we have a look at the log file, you will see that the temperature reading is gonna change. So this is the, the ADC raw voltage, and this is the water temperature that the algorithm is calculating. Um, from that voltage using the, the known response curve of the NPC sensor. You see temperature is rising since I'm filling in warm water. And at a certain point, you will see that the reading of the level sensor will change. Two binaries will be flipped. So 0, 1, 1 means level low, not enough water inside. And as I continue filling, um, it will at a certain point change. So here drum is still spinning, as you can see, water is flowing in, and uh, temperature is pretty warm, 39 degrees C, so this will be a 40 degree laundry, and at a certain point we should see um, that um, the reading of the water level sensor is changing, and as this point is reached, I'm going to close the tap, and then we just need to, oh, now it happened, you see, 011 became 101, so it's now fine. To turn off the water, that's done. We have enough water inside and now the only thing we need to do is to wait for one hour until this wash cycle is gone. And in the meantime, I think I'm gonna watch a video on YouTube here on my washing machine. I think I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, so see you back in an hour. All right, now one hour is over. The periodic drum motion stopped. And as you can see here, on the log messages, um, the water temperature dropped to about 34 degrees C after one hour due to thermal losses to the ambient air. It went down from 40 to 34 degrees. All right, so now the next step to do is um, that we need to pump the water out of the machine and do a spinning cycle. Um, so as I said, the program is not yet fully automatic. I have to do a lot of control steps by hand. Here I will go to option number three, manual RPM control. Let's say we spin counterclockwise. And now with the option minus one, I can activate the drain pump. I turn it on. You hear drain pump is running. And as we are pumping out the water, we should see that at a certain point, um, the status of the water level sensor will switch back. That just happened. You see 101 to 011, that means water level low. So we are still pumping out the water and now we can um, get the drum into motion and um, do a spin cycle. So enter RPM set point. I'm going to start with 60 RPM. So now the drum is spinning and now we are going to accelerate it. And here to my experience it is advisable to initiate the spin process to make a slow ramp across 80 RPM. So I'm slowly ramping it up, 65, 70, 75, 80 RPM. That's roughly a critical point. That's the point where due to the centrifugal force, the laundry will feel roughly zero gravity at the top of the drum. And this is a good point to evenly distribute the clothes in the drum. So we slowly go across 80 RPM and go up to 85. 90 and we hope that we have now nicely evenly distributed the clothes because now we are gonna accelerate quite heavily this is because around 150 200 rpm there's a mechanical resonance of the 
of the vessel of the drum inside this machine. That's why we have to ramp across it fast. And we make now a big step from 100 to 400 RPM. Enter. You see it's spinning up. Still no major mechanical imbalance, so we can go faster. Let's go up to 600 RPM. And maybe even to 800. Here, by the way, in the log messages, you see here the, um, the, the delay between the zero crossing of the line voltage and the ignition of the triax. So 2000 milliseconds, that, that was the safety limit. That was full speed, full power. Now it's going a bit down, so we have some headroom for more. Let's spin up to 1000. Oh, sorry. Typo, it should be 1000. We need to re accelerate. Okay, it's going up again, so pretty fast already. 1000 RPM. Let's have a look inside. Hi, do you shirt some towels in there? How do you like the spin cycle? Okay, we made it better close the door again. And now we can go even faster. Let's say 1200 RPM. And 1,400. Okay, this is now really pretty fast. Woo, actually, not, not really advisable to open the door at this speed. Um, this is just to show you that the door lock is not yet implemented. I can currently open the drum at any time. So roughly the measurement says 1,300, 1,400 something RPM. Fluctuating a bit. So now we are at, at maximum spinning speed and um, maybe we hold this, this RPM level for roughly a minute um, and then we go back to zero and turn the motor off. Now you hear it decelerating, it's spinning down, it's slowing down. We can observe the evolution of the RPM here from the log messages, 942, 899, so spinning speed is going down. So we should now have centrifuged all the water and the, um, the wash powder out of the textiles. And then um, next there will still be two other flush and spin cycles, which I'm now going to do here by hand. And um, I can now turn off the drain pump, minus one disables the pump. And now the machine is spinning down. Let me open the door once more. And you see that in a second it's going to come to rest. Whoop. That's it. Okay, so you see the Washberry Pi is running and an old washing machine whose OEM control electronics had failed now got a second life by getting it controlled with a Raspberry Pi. And finally a remark why I call it Washberry Pi. So this is a play on words that is likely not to be comprehensible to native English speakers because this animal is called a raccoon in English, while in a number of other languages these animals are referred to as wash bears because they have the habit to wash their food before they eat it. And in this sense, this is a, a very funny play on words. Um, so the Raspberry Pi, when controlling the washing machine, becomes a Washberry Pi. And that's, by the way, why it's not, not called Washberry, but Washberry Pi. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.